the artwork for the track is the <laughs> definition of euphoria. A feeling of well-being or elation. So basically, Kendrick is saying that he's feeling pretty damn good right about now. If you haven't seen the previous videos about this stuff, check it out. But I'm sure you know, Drake dissed him with Dropping Gimme 50, or titled Push Ups, when the official version came out. And then Taylor made Freestyle, which had a feature uh, AI of Tupac and Snoop Dogg, which was Drake, you know, kind of voice modulation, all that crap, whatever, dissing Kendrick. And Kendrick has come back. I, I like it. I'm going to say that off rip right now. Let's get into it, shall we? Them superpowers get neutralized like only watching Silence. The famous actor we once knew is looking around paranoid and now spiraling. You move in just like a degenerate, heavy antic. It's feeling distasteful. Why well, calculate you? Not as calculated, I can even predict your angles. Fabricate stories on the family front because you heard Mr. Morale. A pathetic master manipulator. I can smell the tales on you now. You're not a rap artist. You a scam artist with the hopes of being accepted. Tommy Hilfiger stood out, but FUBU never been your collection. How I make music that electrify him and you make music that pacify him. I can double down on that line, but spare you this time. That's random acts of kindness. Know you a master manipulator and habitual liar too, but don't tell no lie about me and I won't tell no truths about you. Drake's superpowers, you know, he's just one of the biggest artists in the world. That's a freaking superpower, right? Famous actor. Drake started on Degrassi. He was a teenager on the Canadian teen drama Degrassi. That's how I learned about Drake. I was in high school. I used to watch Degrassi. This is 06. This is back when Ke uh, Drake put out like his first mixtape. And of course, you know, fabricated stories in the family front, basically saying Drake is making up things because he heard Mr. Morale and how Kendrick was speaking on things like his family, his wife, his sons, you know, other relatives, so on and so forth and calling Drake a manipulator, a master manipulator, but pathetic at that. The Tommy Hilfiger line is, that's the interesting one right here, really? Tommy Hilfiger is a white designer. But FUBU means for us, by us. That was from the culture. That was hip hop. That's rap. That is us, black folk, whatever you want to call it. And he's saying, Drake, you ain't never had no food. You had Tommy Hilfiger. This is a deeper line because Drake is mixed. He was raised by his Jewish mother, not his black father. Let's keep that in mind because this is going to be a recurring theme throughout this track. He was raised by his Jewish mother, not his black father. He is mixed. Kendrick is saying that he's from the culture while Drake is not. Once again, recurring theme. So a lot of emphasis on that. Keep that in mind. He's saying, Drake, don't lie about me in none of your tracks because I will tell the truth about you. I ain't thinking about no Reaper. Nigga, I'm reaping what I sow, okay? Got a Benjamin and a Jackson all in my house like I'm Joe, okay? Benjamin, Jackson, you know, Joe. Joe Jackson is the father of Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 and all the other siblings. So that appears to be another reference to Michael Jackson. He's saying that he's Drake's father, or at least that's how I'm interpreting it. If you got something different, hey, let me know. Everybody wanna be a demon till they get chipped by your throwaway. And I might do a show a day, once a lame, always a lame. Basically, yeah, Drake is on demon time. Drake is scary, oh, he's big, he's bad and all that, but he got chipped by a throwaway. So basically, you can see this as Kendrick saying, this is just a throwaway. This is, but this is going to hit you hard. And of course, once a lame, always lame. Another shot at Drake. Drake is lame before he got famous. And he's basically saying Drake is still lame. It is what it is. Money and fame didn't change him. And you see that right in the next line. Oh, you thought the money, the power or fame would make you go away? Have you ever played? Have you ever? Okay, nigga, let's play. Have you ever walked your enemy down? Like with a poker face, have you ever paid 500,000 like on an open case? Well, I have and I failed at both, but I came out straight. I hate when a rapper talk about guns, then somebody died. They turned into nuns, then hop online, like pray for my city. He faked it for likes and digital hugs. Basically, a diss to Drake for, you know, not being from the environment or the culture or the hood like Kendrick is. You ever walked up on your enemy straight up? Handle business. I've ever paid 500,000, half a million on an open case. 
probably a reference to, you know, having to spend a whole lot of money on a, you know, murder or attempted murder case. Allegedly. He failed. So he's saying, Kendrick's saying, I failed at both. I, I never killed anybody either or whatnot. And I didn't have an open case like that. But I came out straight. So he's basically saying he grew up around that stuff. And he recognizes it and he understands it. But he still took the straight and narrow path. The very first time I shot me a Drake, the homie had told me that aim it this way. I didn't point down enough. Today, I show you I learned from those mistakes. Somebody had told me that you got a ring on God. I'm ready to double the wage. I'd rather do that than let a Canadian nigga make a pop turn in his grave. Cutthroat business. You got it. You got it twisted. What is it? The braids? I hurt your feelings. You don't want to work with me no more. Okay. There's three goats left and I see two of them kissing and hugging on stage. I love them to death. And in eight bars, I'll explain that phrase. Basically, a Drake is a Draco. It's a gun. And that's also Drake's name. Boom. Double entendre. He's saying like he wasn't coming direct enough at Drake in previous shots, but he's correcting that now. Very direct with this dish track. And of course, as a reference right there, make Pac turn in his grave. You see, I put the Tupac turn on for this but um yeah on taylor made freestyle drake used ai tupac to diss kendrick so boom kendrick's using a tupac reference in his song you got shit twisted was it the braids <laughs> like that's just a reference to your braid in your hair you gotta twist it you know i hurt your feelings you don't work with me no more they haven't made songs together anymore you know since kendrick you know made whatever shot or did whatever he did that hurt drake's feelings three goats left Two of them kissing and huckling on stage. That's a reference to First Person Shooter. And the other songs that Drake and J. Cole did together. And he's saying, y'all hugging and kissing and all that. And eh, screw that. I love y'all though, but nah, we ain't that peaceful right now. It's nothing nobody can tell me, huh? I don't want to talk on no celly, huh? You know, I got language barriers, huh? There's no accent you can sell me, huh? Yeah, Cole and Albie know I'm selfish, nigga. The crown is heavy, huh? I pray they my friends. If not, I'm Y and W Melly. R.N.W. Melly is currently on trial for allegedly killing two of his close friends in a car. Big three. Y.N.W. Melly and his two friends. That's three. Basically, Kendrick's making a reference like, I will kill you two. Literally. Just like Y.N.W. Melly did. Allegedly. You know, he said, I don't want to talk on the phone. I don't do none of that. I don't do none of that. I want the crown to myself. I'm a selfish nigga. The crown is heavy. It's mine. It's not big three. It's just big me. This is pretty much a callback to like that, his verse on that song. I don't like you popping shit at Pharrell. For him, I inherit the beef. Yeah, fuck all that pushing P. Let me see you push a T. You better off spinning again on him. You think about pushing me. He's Terrence Thornton. I'm Terrence Crawford. Yeah, I'm whooping feet. Terrence Thornton is Pusha T's real name. And of course, he's close with Pharrell. Drake sent a shot at Pharrell on a previous track. And Kendrick is basically saying, you diss Pharrell. I'm not cool with that. I'm going to diss you now. And of course, Pusha and Pharrell being close. This is all reference to that. Pusha T dissed Drake, so on and so forth. Terrence Crawford. I had to look it up, honestly, after I heard the track. Because I was like, who is that? Terrence Crawford apparently is a boxer. So, you know, Kendrick's saying, Pusha T, is, you know, da, 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 but I'm going to whoop you. <laughs> so, you know, basically a reference to the T's. And Pusha P is also a song with Gunna on it. Came out a few years ago. We ain't got to get personal. This is a friendly fade. You should keep it that way. I know some shit about niggas that make Gunna wanna look like a saint. Once again, Pusha P, a song with Gunna on it. This ain't been about critics, not about gimmicks, not about who the greatest. It's always been about love and hate. Now let me say I'm the biggest hater. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite parts in the song. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's going to be direct. We hate the bitches you fuck because they confuse themselves with real women. And notice I said we. It's not just me. I am what the culture feeling. Damn. Drake got a whole thing that Kendrick really hate about him. Talk, walk, dress, sneak this and all of that. And he's saying I'm the biggest hater. And I'm going to tell you all the stuff I hate about you. Like, it's on. We ain't holding no, we ain't pulling no punches, nothing like that. It's just, it's on. Like, and then he switches it up for the last one to say we, because I remember a lot of people were giving Drake flack for the women he's been with, especially when he had a child with a porn star. So he said, we, 
because he's a part of the culture. This is once again very, very good on Kendrick's part. It's psychological warfare right there because he's directly aligning himself and saying he's speaking for the culture of hip hop, which Drake no longer or never was a part of because of how not only, like I said, that he's Jewish, mixed, Canadian, but also that he makes pop songs and all of that. I really think that whole setup right there was simple, but very, very sweet. How many more fairy tale stories about your life till we had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel that you black enough? I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he acts tough. You gonna make a nigga bring back Puff. Let me see if Chubbs really crashed something. Yeah, my first one, like my last one, it's a classic. You don't have one. Let your core audience stomach that. Didn't tell them where you got your abs from. V12 is a fast one. Bow, bow, bow. Last one. Headshot for the year. You better walk around like Daft Punk. Daft Punk is a great duo. They're known for wearing like helmets and things of that nature, not showing their face. So Drake is um, Kendrick is saying Drake better walk around with a helmet on because he's doing bleep, headshots. Simple enough, you know, and he's saying my first one, like my last one, it's classic. So basically my first album and my last one of classics. But you don't have any. And Drake got more albums than Kendrick. So that's a diss. And then, of course, core audience, stomach that abs. That's a reference to Drake getting his abs sculpted, which, um, I believe Joe Budden might have been the first person on record to say that, you know, like back in like 2016 or so. And of course, black features. Do you feel you're black enough? This is another shot of him for being mixed, you know, doing stuff like getting braids, so on and so forth. You know, allegedly cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, whatever, altering things on his body to feel blacker or, you know, more comfortable in his own skin and all of that, you know even with the whole um, accents that he does in his songs too. And I like Drake's with the melodies. A lot of people say that they don't like Drake when he acts tough on his songs. They prefer when he's rapping and singing about women, so on and so forth. I'm one of those people actually sometimes. Like this whole tough thing, mob ties and all that stuff. And like, blah, blah, blah. It's like come on now, Drake, freaking cut that crap out. We know you're doing it for the music, but you know, nah, chill. Top dog, who the fuck do you think you're playing with? Extortion, my middle name. As soon as you jump off of that plane, bitch, I'm allergic to the lame shit. Only you like me a famous. Yachty can't give you no swag neither. I don't give a fuck about who you hang with. And then he goes back to say, I hate the way you walk, talk, and dress. Yeah, Yachty wrote one of uh, Drake's songs. So that's a reference to that. And the fact that they've, you know, hung out together or whatever, all that's so on and so forth. And he's saying... Drake likes being famous. Kendrick's saying, I don't like being famous. I, I, I could, you know, screw that. I just want to, like, make money and raise my family now. Like, screw all the fame and stuff like that, you know? And, of course, he references Top Dog. That's the head of TDE, which is who Kendrick came from, which is probably a direct response to Drake saying, like, you know, Top say, drop, you better drop and give him 50. So, you know, he's saying, like, who they playing with? Like, you know? Like, Drake think he knows about our relationship? Like, who they... Who is he playing with, man? Extortion. Some rappers are known for getting extorted, you know, when they go to certain neighborhoods, you know, and Top Dog. Allegedly affiliated with the Bloods out in the L.A. area. So, you know, as soon as you hop off that plane, it's like, yeah, you know, Kendrick's from Compton. Whole reference to that. I'm knowing they call you the boy, but where is a man? Because I ain't seen him yet. Matter of fact, I ain't even bleed him yet. Can I bleed him? Bet. When I see you stand by Sexy Red, I believe you see two bad bitches. I believe you don't like women. That's real competition. You might pop ass with him. Basically saying, Drake, you always call yourself the boy, but you ain't acting like a man still. And Drake is the older one of two. So it's like, eh, you call yourself the boy? You kind of act like, well, you're not really acting like a man, Drake. Matter of fact, I didn't even bleed him yet. So he's like, I didn't even cause him to bleed with my shots, but I can? Yes, I, I can. I can do it. No doubt. And of course, that's also a double entendre. Double entendre because he references Sexy Red in the next line, Red, Blood, when he's just Sexy Red, because he's been known to be around Sexy Red a lot. He's like, when you're around Sexy Red, you probably see yourself both as bad bitches. Like, and he's saying, I don't believe you like women. That's you competition to them. You might have a twerk off with them. That's just freaking funny. That, that's, just, that's just hilarious. <laughs> and also can once again be a callback to how sometimes people say that Drake speaks pretty negatively about his relationships with women 
in his songs. That's why he's saying, I, I believe you don't like women because you be speaking down on them, on how you treat them and whatnot. So once again, Kendrick positioning himself like, you know, above all that, you know, like, do you even really like women the way you talk about them? You know, the ones that you're associated with. So once again, not a good shot, in my opinion. Let's speak on percentage. Show me your splits. I make sure I double back with you. You were signed to a nigga that signed to a nigga that said he was signed to that nigga. That seems to be a callback to Exodus 23-1, which was the Pusha T diss track to Lil Wayne and Drake, or, you know, Young Money, Cash Money. Um, you know, Pusha said, you signed to one nigga that signed to one nigga that signed to three niggas. That's bad luck. You know, Drake, Lil Wayne, uh, Birdman and Slim, and then they were signed to, like, Republic, um, Universal, or whatever, so on and so forth, you know. So he's like, you talking about my splits and my percentages? I'm like, yo, he's like, yo, you signed to Young Money, which is under Cash Money, which is under Republic. Which is under Universal, I, if I remember correctly. That's how it goes. Don't worry along those lines. So it's like, yo, check your own splits before you talk about mine. Try and cease and assist on that like that record. Ho, oh, what? You ain't like that record? Back to back. I like that record. I'm going to get back to that for the record. Basically saying like, what? You didn't like like that? Like, why are you mad? Because I, like, I dissed you? But I liked back to back and you was dissed, dissed Meek Mill. Why would I call around trying to get dirt on niggas? Y'all think my life is rap? That's whole shit. I got a son to race, but I can see you don't know nothing about that. Waking him up, know nothing about that. Tell him to pray, know nothing about that. Giving him tools to walk through life day to day, know nothing about that. Teaching him morals, integrity, discipline. Listen, man, you don't know nothing about that. Speaking the truth and consider what God's considering, you don't know nothing about that. Basically, this is also one of the hardest hitting lines probably from Kendrick to Drake in this whole track. Because this pretty much really hits Drake in what is probably one of the most important things you could or one of the most damaging things. He's directly dissing, questioning, insulting Drake's parenting. Drake as a father. Remember, Kendrick is a father now too. Kendrick has, I believe, two sons. Drake has one son, as far as we know. So Kendrick is speaking to him not only as a rapper and as a man, but as a father, like, I'm too busy sometimes to rap. I'm too busy to go back and forth and do this dissing thing with you because I'm raising my sons. You don't know nothing about that. Drake, you're not a good father. Like, that's basically what he's telling him. You, you don't, you can't give him the tools like morals and integrity and discipline because you don't even have them yourself. So how can you teach your son? How can you teach him about God and praying and, and waking them up for school and things of that nature when you can't even do that yourself? You're too busy. He, once again, positioning himself above Drake when it comes to things like morals and standards and integrity. Once again, very hard hitting in my opinion. Ain't a 20v1 is 1v20 if I got to smack niggas that are right with you. This is a call back to Drake saying, what is a 20v1? Because he got dissed by Rick Ross, Kendrick, The Weeknd, and, you know, all that other stuff. It was on a future Metro Boomin album. There was tweets involved, all that. Kendrick is saying, yo, it ain't a 20v1. You got Ghost Riders, so I got to diss you, and you have help. So I got to essentially just diss all y'all because I don't know who's writing your rhymes. Yeah, bring them out too. I clean them out too. Am I battling Ghost or AI? Niggas feel like Joel Osteen. Funny, he was in a film called AI. And my sixth sense telling me to off him. I'm a blick niggas all in a coffin. Yeah, OVO niggas is dick riders. Tell them run to America to imitate heritage. They can't imitate this violence. What I learned, these niggas don't like the West Coast and I'm fine with it. I pushed a line with it. Pick a nigga off one at a time with it. We could be on a three hour time difference. He's saying, am I battling Ghost or AI? Because... Drake dissed him with Taylor Made Freestyle, which had an AI, Snoop, and Tupac. Tupac is deceased. So it's like, yo, I'm battling Ghost and I'm battling AI? The freaking hell is this? <laughs> and then Sixth Sense was the film about like the ghost and whatnot. So yeah. And of course, he's saying, over your niggas is dick riders, tell them to run to America to imitate heritage, but they can't imitate this violence. United States is known for being very violent, especially areas like where Kendrick is from, Compton, California. And he's saying imitate heritage, like Drake's father is from the U.S. So he's like, you imitate me. You know, he's using accents and whatnot, but Drake wasn't raised here. Once again, 
keep that in mind. Like I said, Drake's father's from the U.S., but he wasn't really raised by his father. You know, so it's just an imitation. There's a three-hour time difference between the West Coast and the East Coast. Simple enough. Don't speak on the family, Crody. It can get deep in the family, Crody. Talk about me and my family, Crody. Somebody gonna bleed in your family, Crody. I'd be at New Whole Cling eating fried rice with a dip sauce and blammy, Crody. Tell them you're cheesing, fam. We could do this right now on the camera, Crody. Crody is a slang term that Drake uses. So he's basically mocking Drake and whatnot, saying, don't speak on my family. You talk about me and my family, someone's gonna bleed in your family. And we could do this on camera. I mean, hey, it might be violence, or maybe he's talking about a rap battle. W wouldn't that be crazy to see Drake and Kendrick rap battle? Like, obviously it wouldn't happen, but eh, be, yeah, you know, I'd watch that, man. Oh, fuck y'all niggas. I don't trust y'all niggas. I wave one finger and dump y'all niggas like, mmm, feel gold punk y'all niggas. Stay punk y'all niggas. Nobody ever took my food. Whoever that's fucking with them, fuck you niggas and fuck the industry too. If you're taking it there, I'm taking it further. Psst, that's something you don't want to do. Basically, like, yo, Drake, you don't want to go any further because I'm going to go further and I'm going to go way further than how far you could go. So, like, you better chill because you will kill him lyrically. And, of course, Kendrick ends the song with, we don't want to hear you say nigga no more. Stop. Which wraps up what I said at the beginning. You know, some people might say, like, he didn't go hard enough or something like that. Maybe. But. He really dismantled Drake like Pusha T did back in, what was it, 2018? You know, coming at him for his mixed heritage. He's Jewish and black. He's not from the United States. He puts on fake accents. He does pop songs. He's not from the culture. All these things. And his, and his parenting. What, what, what's missing from this, really, is the, the hard-hitting truth. Like, this is mostly stuff that's already been said, and we already pretty much know about Drake. It's just being reiterated by Kendrick now, who is another, like, you know, top-tier artist, as many would say. But this is a lot of stuff that has been said already by Pusha T or Joe Budden when they dissed uh, Drake years ago. But Kendrick is just taking it a step further. This stuff about Drake is pretty much true. If, if Kendrick came on here and started, like, rapping about how he got more money or something like that, that would have been just a bunch of nonsense, you know? Or how he's more famous? No. You know? So he really dismantled Drake, I would say. Now, once again, if he unveiled something new that we didn't know, the public, I would have put the track... It'd be a bit higher for me. And also, if he picked a better beat. Like, the first beat that was used was, like, okay. It was very, like, passive. Not for a diss track. Then when the beat switched, I was like, okay, this sounds a lot better. Also, I got to take away points because Kendrick is once again doing that thing, those accent thing with his voice that I just personally don't like. But I would still say that this, out of all these diss tracks regarding this beef, this one and push-ups are my two favorites so far. What do you guys think? Do you guys think uh, push-ups is better? This is better? Taylor made freestyle is better? Like that is better? Um, champagne moments? Seven-minute drill? Which, which one's your favorite? You know, I like, I like, I like them all a bit. You know, seven minute drill, unfortunately, J. Cole apologized and took it down, but I still think it was a good diss track. More so the first part before the beat switched up, but you guys know how I feel about that. If you've seen the previous video, if not, then go check that one out because I've made one talking about push-ups and about seven minute drill. But yeah, what do you guys think? I think Drake got to come back. He got to say something. And hopefully maybe Kendrick does have something in the tuck, like even more hard hitting and devastating. But of course, like I always say, hopefully this stays on wax and doesn't have to get to the point where it gets physical or anything like that, you know, because this is rap, this is hip hop, and apparently this is the gear of the rap beef and we're taking it back to song, not just a whole bunch of IG posts and tweets, and I love it. All that social media stuff <laughs> is not for me. You can call me old school, whatever, it is what it is, and I feel like we're getting that feeling back, and I really like that. <laughs> get it? Like that. And if you like this, click the like button. I'll catch you guys next time.